So Shubham, first of all, congratulations. You've got your target score, 760 is no mean achievement. Thank you so much, ma'am. It would not, not have been possible without your efforts and without your contribution to it, to the whole journey. It was a real pleasure, Shubham. I was looking at uh, our chat histories and I found that the very first time you had reached out was 1st October 2021. And here we are almost 10 months down the line celebrating your success. You had already taken GMAT before you reached out to me, right? Yeah. So, Two years back. Yeah, but yeah. So can you share something about your past attempts? What happened before 21? Yeah, so uh, before 21, I'd taken just one attempt before joining Westbridge. So I thought that I would not have time at Westbridge, and but I did not understand how much it takes. So I'd gone with like 15 days of just mock practice and I got a 710. It was, of course, not up to the mark. And then I thought, and then my job has started and I never got to it only till October when I thought that, yes, I should get get a uh, head start when I reached out to Shweta ma'am and uh, started the GMAT prep in an actual way. But earlier than before that, I'd only given one attempt that to get 15 days of just mock practice. So it did not really go that well. And I got a 710 at that point of time. So we can look at that 710 more or less like a diagnostic. And yes. And yes. added 50 points to that diagnostic score, so to say. So Shubham, um, what was the journey like? When you first got in touch, I really believed that you will be somebody who will get your target score within two, three months. You're highly capable. So what happened with your first attempt? After you did the classroom course, you made, another, made an attempt in about three months time. What happened? Why did you not get the target score then? Yeah. No, I, I think there are multiple things and to be honest, actually, even my first attempt was, was after six months of classes. And because there were multiple things which happened, like while we had done the classes in about two, three months, but uh, of course, as you know, that my job was uh, very hectic. So I could not get regular practice. That's number one. Then number two, uh, we had finished classes by say mid Jan. And what happened after that was COVID hit. So uh, I also got died. I also got COVID. So I lost 15 days there. Then suddenly there was some work pressure. I lost about three weeks there. Um, so more or less, you know, I lost the rhythm. So I remember, I clearly remember when I gave my mocks in Jan, I actually got a 760. And we were very hopeful that we'll probably give another mock in next week or so. And in the next two, three weeks, we'll be done with it by end of Jan or mid starting Feb. But actually, the first time I actually booked my uh, GMAT first attempt was in April second week, and that too I had to postpone because of my grandmother falling ill, and hence I had to postpone it to May. And actually, April end, and then I forgot taking my passport, and then again I had to reshift it. So I think there were multiple things which happened. Of course, some like some things were in control, some things were not. But my biggest learning was that I think. What mattered most was just being in the flow. And in all my attempts, which I've taken, like uh, even after the class, I took four attempts. This was the fourth attempt. Uh, so all these three attempts were, for some reason or the other, I, I would lose flow either because of work or because of co external factors or because of something in the home. But this attempt, I think for the past month or so, I was, I was, paying a lot of attention to it. Every day I would do something or the other, even if five questions, but I would do that. I would even give, even if 30 minutes, if not one hour or two hours. And of course on weekends, I gave more time. So I think just being in that flow helped me a lot. And I think that's the biggest learning for me to this journey. So you are saying that for somebody to hit the target score, it's very important to be in the flow, be in rhythm for at least two, three weeks before the exam. Yes, that's what's my biggest learning is. Very important takeaway, especially for those who have work schedules like you do. I think it's important if you share what kind of work schedule were you coping with in the last one year? Yeah, so like not diving too much into it, but I think it was pretty, pretty hectic. Uh, I would say that I was doing 14, 15 hours per day, including weekends. So it was 100 hour plus week. Um, plus like in general, of course, there was COVID, etc. So a lot of things went 
you know, sideways in that perspective. Then in the middle, my grandmother fell ill in the last two or three months. So I had to rush home in the middle. So multiple things, but I think the biggest work pressure was there. And and since I'm in the PVC industry, and as people might know, 2021 has been a great, great year for all the startups. While, while uh, we have deployed a lot of capital and have been a part of multiple deals, uh, but it did, did take a, a toll on my health uh, on the time which I had to give to GMAT and hence, you know, I could not uh, give it enough time, which I should have um, in hindsight. But uh, yeah, I think that's that was my work schedule. And I think for anyone in the future, I would like urge them to be more, you know, transparent with your senior team and say that, yes, I need these, this one month, like post, post your classes, maybe take two, three weeks and just give that, like be in that flow. Uh, every day, either do some OG or some cross-referencing or give a mock, something or the other, because I just feel that that really helps. Uh, so I think for anyone who is doing it from PVC industry, I think like don't take it lightly, I would say. Uh, just be in that flow for at least two weeks, if not if not more. And um, and yeah, I, and I'm sure ma'am has done a great job. So that will always work out. Thanks. But I saw during class time, at least, you were one of the few who would never miss a class. You are always on time. Your homework was always done. So how is it that with a 14, 15 hour work schedule, you managed? So how much were you sleeping? What were your study hours? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so during classes, um, and that's why I took taken an early morning class with ma'am. So I would wake, wake up, say, I'd say 7.30, 7 a.m. And you'd start our class usually 8, 8, 8 30, And one hour class, and then I would say go to work or like start working. I was mostly working from home even when we started the class. So what? So after the 40, 15 hour work schedule, I would say sleep at maybe one and just before sleeping I would uh, finish some part of the homework and the other part of the homework I would just complete with half an hour before the class so I, I told ma'am also many times that I just completed the homework so basically I took time either half an hour one hour before sleeping or half before the class I would talk out half an hour one hour to go through whatever we I had ma'am had taught in the last class and whatever ma'am had told to do and try to complete as much as possible during that time. So, and that was how I usually managed my homework or the classes. So I usually try to be as punctual as, as I can. So that's something which has always been with me. So I'm glad that that did not go away. So Shubham, how did you do quant? When did you take out time to do quant? Yeah, on quant, actually, I, I spent some time but I would not say I spend as much time as on Warburg. And uh, because Quant, given I'm from IIT, given, um, you know, I had good maths scores in, in school, I think I felt very confident on the Quant part of things. Having said that, I did not get a 51, but, uh, but I did not practice a lot of it. But um, I, would, I would go Quant on weekends mostly. Whenever uh, I used to, you know, have some... Like I, I used to go out of practice or I just felt, let's just do some quant practice. Uh, ma'am had already shared resources on advanced topics on quant, etc. Uh, so I would do those advanced questions mostly. And uh, I, to be honest, I did not do any quant from, uh, from the OGs at all. I only did advanced questions which ma'am shared. And uh, those were helpful. And in one of the attempts, I know, I remember I got a 49. I was very upset about it that... <laughs> Uh, you know, how did I get a 49 in this? And that's when I spent a bit more time just to see, okay, what are the topics which I'm getting wrong? And uh, for, and for some reason, I think it was set, sets and geometry, which, you know, I would always get one or two questions wrong. So I just practice a bit more on that, on the advanced topics. And um, and that really helped. But but having said that, I spent like 10x the amount of time on verbal than quant, if I have to say. Okay, got it. Now let's talk about a little bit more in specific. Mm-hmm. You got a 50 on quant, but I believe you made only one or two errors on the test. Yeah. And uh, that reflects in the overall score. You got a 760. Your score combination was 50 and 41. 
frequently 50 and 41 lead to a 740 or a 750 score. So I think the overall score justified how well you had done on quant, even though the sectional score did not. Um, I want to also touch upon how you studied for verbal. Let's go one by one. Let's start with sentence correction. What do you think was different about how you prepared for sentence correction? How did that translate into speed and accuracy? Can you throw some light? Sure. So I think uh, ma'am has a great toolkit for sentence correction. Uh, of course, uh, going through all the rules which ma'am uh, tells during classes, practicing that, remembering that, uh, and then cross-referencing, which is ma'am's biggest toolkit, which she gives to all the students. So I think uh, going through all the questions, uh, even once, and going through all the options really helps. It it kind of builds that muscle, muscle memory, which ma'am says, right? That uh, basically, you know, there is a lot of, a lot of uh, things in sentence correction, a lot of rules, lots of regular, lots of small things which you have to be careful about, and you can't remember it all. It has to, it has to get ingrained in your memory in some ways. So I think uh, just doing those sentence correction questions on a regular basis really helps, and that's where I think I lost track because. As I, as I said earlier, that I would not be always in the flow. And for sentence correction, to build that muscle memory, you need that two, three weeks of constant practice or regular practice of doing it. And one more thing which I would say I it got, I like it helped me was that initially I was only doing from the OGs and I had almost completed uh, two OGs, actually two and a half OGs uh, by the second or third attempt. So this time in my fourth attempt, I also took an online question back and I practiced on that as well because I just felt that being in a timed environment helps also build some stress capabilities, uh, which I would also advise to future students that like if you have like if taken takes any online question back and maybe even practice from that. And you know, while the focus should be on OG and uh, focus should be on cross-referencing that. But giving only the GMAT mocks may not be enough for some people. Maybe for building that accuracy in a timed environment, what also helps is say using any online question bank and giving online mocks or just doing online sentence correction practice. That really helps uh, you know to actually get it more ingrained and and also spending time on okay what is and then tying it back to the rules that okay if I got this wrong what was the rule which was getting applied and why did I get it wrong? And so that it improves in the next attempt. Okay, got it. Let's talk about critical reasoning. How important was uh, it for you to learn the concepts? Yeah, I think it was super important to learn the concepts on critical reasoning on, you know, whether a question is talking about strengthening, weakening, you know, what is it a goal or is it a, you know, para completion? That is very obvious, but even in goals, you know, there are assumption questions as well as, you know, whether the cause and effect question or the, you know, strengthening or weakening question in the goal part of things. It's very important to identify the type of question and, and keep, you know, uh, take it accordingly. Like as ma'am says that if it is a strengthened question, it's not necessary to find that one option which strengthens the most, but also look at other options which weaken and then try to eliminate that. I think critical reasoning is more about elimination and like when we come to RC, same thing there. Like sentence correction is identifying the right one, right? Uh, and some it's very easy to eliminate. In critical reasoning, it's not that easy to eliminate. You have to go through each and option very carefully and see whether it really ties it back to the original passage or not. So it's important to that's why know the concepts and like for example, like only can only be used if it is there in the passage and only, and only then can an option be correct in that. Be wary of some few, etc. I think these very small concepts really help you a lot to eliminate options. And I think critical reasoning, you have to go through all the options and only then can you eliminate the four options and go to the right one. Okay, let's talk about the main course of your score, which was reading comprehension where you got 100% accuracy. How did that happen? Yeah, I think uh, that happened because of two reasons, I feel. Uh, one, that just before my fourth attempt, I started reading a book. So that really helped me fasten my reading uh, like speed in general. Uh, and I think that that is super, super critical for RC because 
uh, as as the students might be aware that it's important to have that structure in your mind and having that spending just that extra two minutes on the passage helps you further save time in the question so for me i would actually rather spend two and a half minutes man prescribes two minutes where i would spend two and a half minutes because i saw that after that two and a half minutes my per question speed would reduce drastically and i would only spend one one and a half minute per question answering that because like writing down the structure a lot of it just imbibes into you and it's very easy to eliminate options after that and again in rc it's important to eliminate options just like cr and while in sc also you're eliminating options but in sc you have rules to go by in rc there are no specific set of rules there are some guidance which which is there that okay we should not talk about only or you should not talk about or you know general to specific should not be there so so those those kind of guidances are there but you have to all go through all the options in details to understand which is right which is wrong and uh, i think again the other parts which really helped was of course the word matching the vertical scanning the location preferences so i think a lot uh in these passages uh, especially in the last time i think i spent a lot of time just making sure that the option ties back to the location ties back to the idea which is being inferred by the author and since my reading speed had increased in general uh, it helped me go to the passage faster and i could spend more time on the question and just tie it back to the passage and see where it is being fit and uh, i think that that's really helped but but to be honest i think uh rc you can always get one or two errors during the whole exam the 14 rc questions so i think i was lucky as well that i got 100% accuracy but but yeah i would say that you know you should um the focus should be on just tying it back to the passages idea the author's idea and not assume things uh especially in rc and cr i think facts are facts there and just uh, just stick to it awesome so shubham let's do one thing let's take everyone through your esr i'm so happy that you purchased the esr for this attempt and sure. you know i have with me the esr here we go yeah. you have a perfect 8 on ir congratulations for that i think this time ir was very easy we can see that you spent an average of 1 minute 49 seconds on each verbal question which mm -hmm. is a very good time management yeah i actually i just ended on time so i i would not say it was very good time management but it was just borderline okay we can see this this is how ir went yeah in general you have approximately 2 minutes per question so you have used those 2 minutes this is verbal yeah and this is the 100% accuracy we were talking about on rc yes it's very interesting for me that your score on the communication based questions on sentence correction is higher than grammar because normally we experience the opposite yeah yeah no i i agree this time i don't know why this was the case but um, i think also because since i was reading and since i was doing a lot of these online uh, sentence correction practice um, in general i you know i got that hook of you know just getting the meaning of the sentence as well while ma'am has strictly advised not to get into it but it kind of you know got into me automatically so hence i think that's why it helped me in this meaning analysis that i would in general automatically you know cater to a meaning so i did not spend a lot of time understanding the meaning but in case if i felt that okay the meaning is not coming out i would like change options or change change my uh, answer so perhaps that and uh, grammar yeah this time i made two i think two errors here uh, but yeah i but, uh i don't know some some of the communication parts clicked and it went well that's a good thing so under normal circumstances the split i see is grammar usually uh, my students get almost 100% some mm -hmm. do get 100% exactly communication we see 60 to 80 of course we've had situations of 100% so mm -hmm. 
so um somebody who develops a good natural ear for the language you know you know what sounds mm -hmm. right does well on communication but as a blanket rule uh, we've seen that it's not possible for everyone within a short time to develop that so it's easier to bank on the grammar yeah so what worked what got you the 41 and how that 41 led to a 760 we can see mm -hmm. clearly when we look at this yeah. the first quarter is error free yes and your errors are concentrated in q3 4 which tells you how you reached a higher level of difficulty and if you can see the analysis the graph here yeah. in general, the level is above moderate and the questions yes. that you got wrong fortunately were higher level questions the easier questions you get wrong the more the score falls yeah yeah no i had done that from my past year time so I, and even if we go to the further time management, you'll see that in my first two, uh, first half of the uh, exam, I was more conscious of time. So that's why if you see my second quarter, I spent like two minutes, 15 uh, seconds uh, per question. Though I would not advise students doing that. Uh, but, you know, it just because, and since it was my fourth attempt, I was a bit more conscious, conscious about that. Because if you see my third attempt, I think, I would, I still believe that was my best attempt in terms of number of questions getting wrong because I had only got one RC and one CR wrong and ma majority of our SC questions, which I got wrong, but still I got a 720 and I was actually very bummed after that. And, and because I, even at that point of time, I really felt confident about the verbal section and I knew that things will go like, I was confident about things going right, but it did not go well because my first half first quarter had the majority of the errors concentrated, whereas my second half was completely error-free. So hence, naturally or, you know, subconsciously, I spent more time in my first half ensuring that, you know, I don't make silly mistakes there. And uh, it somehow clicked and I got 100% accuracy in my first half uh, while it helped. But I would still not advise students to like spend two minutes, 15 seconds per question in the second half stick to that 1 minute 30 to 1 minute 40 uh, average time per question. I think that is super critical for for the overall exam because you don't want to miss any question. And that's why I feel that in my last two questions, I was actually rushed. I only had about two minutes and there was one CR, one RC. So hence I think my last quarter accuracy dropped even further because I could not spend enough time on the last two questions. So hence I would advise students not to actually give it give too much weightage during the first half rather keep it evenly paced so that like your overall exam goes well i think if we calculate we can make an educated guess that you made in the range of six to eight errors in total yes right i think and seven according to my calculation but yes six to eight so th that's exactly the error range we would like to concentrate ourselves in if we are targeting a 40 and above with hopefully zero rc errors yeah RC errors tend to be the most expensive. Yeah. And, and I'm so glad that your ASR has proved that. Because we keep emphasizing that RC is going to save your life or it's going to cost you the exam. Yeah. Here's a quick look at quant. So the couple of errors that you made in look like they were restricted in geometry and the rates ratio percentage. So I'm sure they were avoidable. Yeah. Could have been some calculation errors or something. Yeah, no, I think one question was actually tough. And I, I remember that question very well. And uh, I can even discuss it for the uh, sake of this, for, for, bet, for the students in the future. So basically it was a, it was a, it was a circle with 12 inches of uh, radius and it was cut at a 120 degree. And using the two ends of the cut part, a cone was formed and you had to calculate the altitude of the cone. So okay. what I did wrong was I actually visualized it wrong. And uh, the, the question, later on when I thought about it, it was actually rather simple uh, when I was discussing it with my fat mate. But I think I could have avoided that. So that was the second last question of the paper. I clearly remember the 38th question. So that was in the last quarter. Uh, and if I had not done that, I could have got a 51, but never mind. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, but yeah, the ratio proportion, I don't remember, but I'm sure it was avoidable. 
So bottom line, I feel because the number of errors was not high on quant overall, while the algorithm gave you 50, you were compensated in the overall score. Yes. Similarly, in verbal, you were compensated because of your 100% RC, you were compensated. You got a higher score, the higher end of the score combination. Yes. Uh, which is a big relief. So how do you feel, Shubham, ultimately? Five attempts later, 760, a lot of sweat, 10 months later, how does it feel? I think just an sense of relief. Uh, and uh, it's just, it was a big hurdle and it was a big mental factor. And uh, so I'd already started my uh, my prep on the MB applications part simultaneously because I knew that I could not just wait for GMAT to get cleared and then start. So hence, there were multiple things going on and it always played on your mind. And un until you get a good GMAT score, you'll always have doubts whether to apply to the school, whether to apply to that school or not. So it's a big mental factor. And to be honest, I was, it was also a big part of self-doubt, which starts coming into you uh, since, since I think almost every student of Shraddha Ma'am has had a good track record uh, in like you know, previous academics or, you know, work experience, etc. So when it comes to GMAT and if he or she is not getting their target score, their potential score, it always, you know, reduces your confidence. And so it so happened with me as well. You know, I would, I was, I was not feeling well about myself. You know, I was always doubting me, what am I doing wrong? And I could not figure it out. And uh, hence, you know, when you get that score, it's a big, big relief. Uh, it's a big, it's just a, it's just a big mental load off yourself and getting it one month before the deadlines, I think that's also a big relief uh, because otherwise uh, it gets, it, the longer it gets postponed, the uh, higher the tension, higher the stress level. So I think in general, I think I just feel relieved. That's it. And of course, thankful and grateful to ma'am, to family, to friends, to everyone who has been in this journey. Uh, it's been a long 10 months for sure. Well-deserved score, Shubham. I'm so happy that finally you got your target score. And if anyone deserved it, it was you. But Thank you so much, ma'am. One thing that I, I feel uh, uh, your journey can teach others is how you coped with exam stress. Uh, I get students every day from your background, your peer group. They are IITians, they work for private equity. The kind of um, stress that everyone is under, the stakes are very high, the competition is very high. You're competing for the top spots. Yeah. So um, that I've, I've seen unimaginable levels of stress. I've got messages middle of the night that if I if I don't get my target score, I'm slitting my wrist. And, and that's put a question mark many times on what we are doing and why we are doing. I have become very fond of saying that stressing over GMAT is a first world problem. You are a privileged lot, the best brains of the country heading to become the best brains of the world. Um, you are a privileged lot. And to not make the best of that privilege, not take advantage of that opportunity, but to stress over it. Now that there's a positive way of looking at it and there's a negative way of looking at it. Ultimately, one has to face the demons. How did yeah. you face your demons? Yeah, I think uh, the other part, how I face my demons, I think in all my three attempts before this attempt, I think, uh, of course, I was losing flow or I was not in practice, but I think in my third attempt, I was very confident. But what what was always playing on my mind was probably that okay, I need to score this much. I need to score that much, right? It always, and even if you, like when people say that, don't think about it, just chill and go and give it, it's it's easier said than done. And I think uh, ma'am ma knows it, every student knows it uh, because it's always there in the back of your mind. So hence, uh, even before this attempt, what other major change which I did was started meditating. And and I would, I suggested it to everyone in the group and I'll tell all the future students as well that I think meditation really helps, uh, helps really calm your mind. And there's an amazing app called Waking Up uh, where there's a Stanford professor who actually goes through guided meditation. Uh, my flatmate actually recommended it to me and, and has been very helpful in just making myself calm and even actually in this exam 
just before starting the exam i meditated for 2 minutes during the break of 8 minutes i meditated for 2 3 minutes and it actually just helps you clear your head because and usually i think most of the students take quant first and then go to verbal and it can always happen that in quant you might get stuck on one or two questions and just stays you know in your mind that okay i could have got this i could have got this but it's important to just clear that off and go into verbal with a clean state of mind and be as calm as possible i think verbal tests your uh, stress levels to the maximum uh, so hence it's very important to just stay calm during that point of time so i think meditation really helps uh, that stress just goes away and to be honest during verbal i was just quite focusing on one question at a time and not focusing on you know game i made that mistake or you know i could have or i should get this score i should get that score i just i just went with the mindset that you know i'm confident of you know getting a good score let's just give it and just do question by question and and let's see where we get so i think not having expectations is tough but it's important and probably clearing your head removes that expectation so i would suggest all future uh, aspirants to you know try some meditation before the exam uh, maybe two weeks three weeks and i'm still continuing with it i think it really helps just keep a focused mind and a calm mind awesome shubham thank you so much for sharing all this i'm sure it's going to help a lot of people already your esr and understanding the importance of scoring on rc has helped many okay i hope so i i am so happy that we're all starting this culture of learning from the cohort peer learning learning from seniors because we we are like we like i said we're a privileged lot and we shouldn't further put up walls around us um, yeah. we should build a lot of team learning um all the best for your applications now i'm very very sure that a very bright future awaits you thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you so much for all the help which you have given over the course of 10 months and yes looking forward to you know having more interactions in the future absolutely i'm going to see you in bangalore very soon yes bye shubham thank you bye bye thank you